Hey there, thanks for joining. Uh, this is a, a five-part video series on text mining for Rapid Miner. This is video four. Um, my name is Neil McGuigan, and my, you can find my blog at vancouverdata.blogspot.com. If you haven't seen my other videos, um, you can go to my YouTube channel, uh, which is at um, youtube.com slash user slash vancouverdata. Okay, and last uh, video I talked about association analysis with text. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the TF IDF uh, score for words. And I'm going to talk about document simula similarity, and I'm going to talk about document clustering. Okay, so here we are in Rapid Miner. I'm going to read a couple hundred documents from a database. Um, the documents are job postings from a popular job site. And then I'm going to process those documents, uh, stripping out the HTML, turning them into words, and putting them in lowercase. And then I'm going to calculate the TF-IDF score, which is a which I'll show you how to calculate. Okay. And from that, we will find the uh, TF-IDF score for all the words in all the documents. Okay. So. The way TF-IDF works is, here's a little Excel spreadsheet. So the term frequency for a given document, so that's kind of the, rel that's the relative uh, word count um, of a word in a document. Okay, so say it's 0.5, okay? You can get that actually from the term frequency uh, vector. Okay, so if you want to do it manually, then do that first. And then document count is the number of documents. Okay, count of documents containing the term. So if uh, 10 documents contain the term you're looking at, um, then you have to add one as well in case that is, uh, in case that number is zero, then you don't want to divide by zero. Okay, and then you, um, you calculate the ratio. So that one over that one. And you take the log of that, and then you multiply this one times that one. And that gives you the TF-IDF score. Now that's useful because it gives you the relative importance of a word to a given document compared to the importance of the word to all the documents in your corpus. Okay, so for example, if the word appears quite frequently in your document, then your TF-IDF score is going to go up. Okay. But if a lot of documents contain that word, let's say 300 of them, then your TF-IDF score is going to drop quite a bit. Okay, so if the word boat appears in your document lots of times, but not in other documents very often, then uh, it'll have a high TF-IDF score. And if it appears, you know, just a few times in your document and it appears, you know, in quite a few documents elsewhere, it's not going to be very important. So it'll have a lower TF-IDF score. Okay. Now, an easy way to uh, look at document similarity is to use the uh, similarity operator. So data to similarity. Now, this operator is not particularly fast because it has to make a huge uh, matrix. Um, so I would not recommend doing that with 400 documents. So I'm just going to grab the top 50 documents here. And and TF-IDF is a good one to use here. And you want to use cosine similarity. Okay, and basically here's why. So this is a very simple, simple uh, example, um, just in two dimensions. So say your, your uh, document has a couple of words. One of them is banana. You know, it's got a score between zero and one, although TF-IDF can go higher. And another, another word, fish, between zero and one, okay? So say it's got a high fish score, okay, but a low banana score, then that's the document, that's your first document there, okay? And another document, say it has a high banana score and a, and a medium fish score, 
Okay, so that's a second document there. Now you've got a third document, and you want to figure out which one's which one it's most similar to. Now say it's got a medium banana score and a medium fish score. Okay, so basically it's just the distance. Whichever one's closer is going to be the more similar document. Okay, so this one's slightly closer to that one. Um, now because TF-IDF scores are always positive, then what it actually does is it looks at the angle between the documents. Okay, so this angle is, lower, is smaller than that angle. So it's going to say that these documents are more similar. Okay? Now it's, you know, it doesn't use just two words, it does, you know, hundreds of words at a time, but that's basically what it does. So I'm just going to run that. Okay, so that took just a few seconds. Um, here's the results window. Okay, so go to your similarity measure object, all right, and then sort it by similarity. That can take a, a few seconds or so. And then, <clears throat> so these documents here are the most similar, so 21 and 24. So we'll go back to our example set. 21 and 24. Okay, you can copy and paste those into Notepad. But you'll see that they're actually identical. So these are actually duplicates. Okay, so this can actually be a good way to find duplicates in your database. Okay, and then uh, 31 and 34 are quite similar, but not identical. So 31, I'm just going to copy that. And 34. So it's the full-time phone agent. Okay, it's got uh, quite a few overlapping words. So that's, uh, you know, that document's 93% similar to the other one. Okay, and then way at the bottom, you're gonna have documents that are, have no overlapping words at all. Okay, so that's document similarity. And now I'm gonna talk about um, clustering. Okay, so um, clustering can be pretty quick, especially the k-means uh, clustering algorithm. So I'm going to go back to 400 of the documents here. And clustering basically, um, you'll find the most similar, similar documents and group them into a set number of uh, groups. So you have to pick that yourself. Okay, I'm going to try to find, you know, the 10 most similar documents to one that I'm looking for. Uh, since I have about 400, then I'm going to create 40 clusters. Uh, so that should, on average, create a cluster size of about 10, but not necessarily. So 40 clusters. OK, just leave that as is. TFIDF. OK. And then save and run. This should take about a minute, so I'm just going to pause it. Okay, so it's finished clustering. That took about a minute and 40 seconds. Uh, this computer is not particularly fast. If you have a lot more RAM and a faster CPU, it'll be quite a bit faster. Um, and also if you have, uh, you know, filter out some of the, the more use, useless words. Okay, so in the example set, look at your data view. And it's got added a cluster column here. Okay, so here's cluster 13, for example. Okay, and you can sort by that field to get your clusters all together. So if you can see, um, you know, BC Trucking, Class, dri class D Drivers, Concord Transport, uh, Newspaper Delivery, Casual Drivers. So it's kind of clustered all together. Um, you know, jobs about transport and driving, okay? And it'll have some similar clusters as well. Um, and you can see the cluster, uh, the number of items per each cluster. Okay, some are pretty big, 25 versus you know, 3. Um, you can see the documents in each cluster here. Okay. And get the centroids. And yeah, so from there you can, um, you know, say you had uh, a website and you want to show, you know, the 10 most or the, you know, the most related documents to the current document, you cluster them and then, you know, display the, 
all the documents uh, links beside that document that are in the same cluster. Okay, so that's how clustering works. <coughs> so basically, I talked about um, TF-IDF score, uh, similarity, and clustering of documents. And the next video, which should be later today, uh, it will talk about um, categorizing documents automatically. Okay, and thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.